Hi everyone! How are you doing today? My name is Marion, and if you're new to this channel, I usually make videos on classic literature, history, and any books that look interesting to me, oftentimes old books. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be going over five quick tips to help you get back into Bible reading. And so this video is going to be geared mostly towards Christians, but I also hope there'll be something helpful here if you read the Bible as literature as well. I do not want this video to come across as any kind of virtue signaling. Um, actually, re reading the Bible has been one of the hardest things for me personally. Um, I read the Bible throughout K-12 through and then took like a 10-year break where I just wasn't reading the Bible at all or very, very infrequently. So yeah, I'm just getting back into it or have got back into it since I think the last three years, two to three years. Um, and there's been some things that have really helped me and I just wanted to share them. Um, these are not original ideas. I've collected them from various uh, teachers and pastors and priests. So I uh, hope, hope you find this helpful and let me know if you have any uh, tips you'd like to share in the comments. So tip number one is find a format that works really well for you. I'm going to show you uh, the first Bible or one of the first Bibles I ever read. And this is a King James Version. It's a very beautiful uh, presentation. Um, but one challenge I've had or had with this Bible is that, as you can see, it's got pretty dense text and the columns are very, very small. It's also a pronunciation Bible, so it's got all of the names with their pronunciation markings. And this is a great book, um, again, if you're wanting to learn how to pronounce the names, if you're just wanting a more, you know, beautiful presentation. But I personally have found it difficult to read this, and I really found it to be uh, quite a struggle, actually, for me personally. So, uh, and, and then another Bible that I grew up reading was my uh, New International Version, and, and this isn't a video on translations, by the way. This is just talking about the visual and reading format. And this Bible, this uh, NIV, had very, very tiny font. Um, it's like probably size 7 or 8, to be honest, if we're talking in web pixels. So not super readable either. Um, so what I've found super helpful getting back into Bible reading is a paragraph or reader's Bible. The uh, translation I've been reading the last year or so is um, this New King James Version single column. And it is really, really nice because it's very much like a book, like a kind of book that you would read um, there's no columns, all of the poetry and the songs are uh, set as verses. And so really have found it's made a huge difference. Before I was reading this, I was also using Bible Gateway, which is pretty much the same thing except digital. So that's also an option. Um, but yeah, I know some people I've talked to didn't realize that Bibles are published this way, but... Uh, you can find this for New King James Version and also uh, King James Version. So I'll show you that one because I thought I should have a King James in the same format. This one is the New Cambridge Paragraph Bible King James Version with Apocrypha. And it's the same same kind of format. Uh, it has a serif font, which is a little more uh, classic looking. Uh, definitely something to consider if you're struggling with the traditional column format. Tip number two is alternate between the Old Testament and the New Testament. So it's pretty uh, tempting to read the Bible as one book from Genesis to Revelation. Um, but something that I've learned, which is helpful for me, is reading a book of the Old Testament and then reading a book of the New Testament because they are pretty different in style and focus. Well, when I mean focus, I mean the Old Testament is very much centered around the history of Israel 
and their relationship with God, whereas in uh, the New Testament, you've got, you know, of course, the story of Jesus' life and um, lots of letters and teachings. So there's some big differences there. And it's just very helpful to go back and forth because the New Testament references the Old Testament quite a bit. So it, that helps you pick up on those references. Tip number three, Lectio Divina. I'm not sure if I said that quite right. So um, especially in Catholic tradition, there is a way of reading the Bible called Lectio Divina or divine reading. And there's five steps to it. There's reading, so you read a passage, and then there's meditation, there's prayer, and then contemplation. And then the fifth uh, step, which um, in some versions occurs, is called action. I don't always read using Lectio Divina, but it, it certainly helped me um, getting back into Bible reading. It's it's less like reading. It's, it's half reading, half prayer. And so um, when I do it, I, I usually just do the first three steps, the reading, the prayer, and the meditation. But anyway, just thought I would throw that out there for those of you who may not have grown up Catholic or have familiarity with that tradition. Tip number four, read philosophy and history. So for the longest time, I really stayed away from philosophy because I didn't understand why I would need it. And uh, I've, I've really got into it the last couple of years, not just because it's interesting, which it really is if you start reading it as, you know, the history of thought. But um, it, it gives you a global context and another like non-religious perspective so that when you go back to the Bible, everything that's being taught by Jesus, everything being described um, just has a lot more resonance. It's kind of like looking at a picture. Um, like if you if you don't read philosophy, the picture kind of blends into your your own worldview that you already have maybe if you grew up religious. Um, but putting it against a backdrop of philosophy and, and other thought, it just, it is really illuminating in a sense. It, it really gives you that contrast that helps you appreciate, um, the teachings a lot more. The, a couple of, uh, genres of philosophy I would recommend would be stoicism and existentialism. There's a lot of overlap, in some of those teachings, um, obviously not a one-to-one -one overlap, but it it's it's really good stuff. A nice gateway if you're going from Christian writing to philosophy. Um, but I also recommend, of course, other other philosophical thought, even contrary to a scriptural teaching, because again, giving you that that comparison, it just it just helps things like fall into place. Tip number five is read what you can. So I try to read daily or at least four or five times a week. And sometimes I'm like really busy in the morning and I just, I'm not in the mood to sit down and read the Bible, but I have just tried to make it a goal to read a section. Maybe it's a paragraph, maybe it's a chapter, depending on what feels right for that morning. And it's just been a good habit. And I think it's beneficial. Obviously, ideally, you'd sit down and read a whole book at a time or, you know, in a few sittings. But if you're trying to develop a habit of scripture reading, I recommend just picking the smallest piece that feels right to you for that day and not feeling like you have to stick to a particular schedule. So yeah, those are my five tips. Hope there was something here that helps you. Um, I may not be doing many books on, uh, the Bible. It's not something I'm trying to move into, but I did want to share something that's really made a big difference in my life recently. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.